I've been preparing for the spring garden season, making plans, taking inventory of seeds, deciding what I'm going to grow and where to plant. It's hard to believe that spring is around the corner, especially when it's still so cold outside. This winter has been rough. Some days we've had extremely cold temperatures into the negatives and heavy snow, followed by unusually warm days in the 60s. It's been confusing for the plants, and I even had to treat the goat and their shed for mites, something I wouldn't normally have to deal with this time of year. I can't wait to see and feel more sun and watch the trees begin to bloom again. Yep, let's get inside the, the shed, hon. There we go. There's never a dull moment on our farm. Over the past two years that we've been here, we added chickens and goats. And now we have a new addition to our farm, an Australian shepherd. He came to us unexpectedly. We weren't planning for another dog, seeing how our other dog is old and set in his ways. He's a husky mix and doesn't do so well with other dogs, especially in his old age. He was raised in the city, so out here on our farm, he wants to attack anything that moves, and we've had to keep him on a leash because we nearly lost him a couple times. His instinct is to hunt, so when he picks up a trail, he gets hyper-focused and doesn't know when to stop. We had talked about getting a farm dog, but not until after our other dog passes on. But sometimes things don't always go how you plan. On a routine trip to our local Amish feed store, they happened to have an Aussie puppy that they were trying to find a home for. They recently sold the dog to another family, but he was returned because the family changed their mind. So now they were giving him away for free in hopes of finding him a good home fast. We decided to bring him into ours. It was an instant bond and he's taken to our farm and family extremely well. I introduced him to the goats and chickens, and he's even been helping me with my daily farm chores. I haven't had to put him on a leash once. He stays by my side and is already getting familiar with the land. We've been calling him Ollie, short for Oliver, and he's really starting to settle into his new name and new home. I got an old dog and I call him Green He's the sickest looking lurcher that you've ever seen Now my old dog, he can't do a darn thing When I shout to him, fetch, he refuses to bring He's got a skin complaint, he's a real smelly mutt He's grown a streak of anger and he bit me in the butt He's gone barking mad, he's following his tail Once he could have caught it But now he's going to fail Can't take him for a walk Or take him for a run My old dog Green He ain't a lot of fun He scratches all day When he's chewing on his bone In my last video, I shared with you how I recently sent out samples of my soil to be tested. Well, I finally got the results back, and it showed me what I need to change or add to my garden soil to improve it. The pH is a tad high, making my soil slightly alkaline, and I need to add a lot of nitrogen before I plant anything in my garden this season, so I'll be using blood meal to do this. It showed me that I have adequate amounts of organic matter in my soil, which is a good thing, but it also showed me that my blueberries desperately need help. So I'll have to add sulfur to bring down my pH levels if I want to see them grow. Having this kind of data has been eye-opening and extremely helpful when planning my garden this year. I've already ordered all the soil amendments I'll need and more organic compost so that I can start adding in my freshly made biochar. 
With all of these changes, I hope to have a better grow season this year. It's amazing how the smallest changes can impact the life of a plant. Even the slightest change in frequency, such as when a plant grows better when placed next to a certain other species, but doesn't fare well when put next to others. Or when the magnetic frequencies shift through planetary alignments or below ground movements and vibrations due to nearby fracking or drilling. It is true that all organic beings are deeply affected by their environment and how we respond to it depends on our own frequency. It's all an exchange of energy, of vibration and resonance. I've always been fascinated by studies done by people such as Dr. Masaru Emoto. He studied water and his amazing work has demonstrated how water is shaped by its environment, our thoughts, words, and even our emotions. It's profound studies like this that can't help but make you wonder that if water is affected by words, intentions, and energies, then what about the plants and even human beings who are made mostly of water? One of the things I'm looking at exploring with my garden this year is electroculture, which is a method using magnetic fields to stimulate plant growth. It's a theory that was first developed in the early 1800s, but wasn't studied more until the mid-1900s. Since then, there have been so many breakthroughs with this, which naturally has me curious, especially since I'm a firm believer in the power of energy and frequency. By shifting the current beneath the earth to the roots of the plants, it can help improve the soil and increase crop yields. There are many ways to do this that I'm beginning to research now, such as copper and wood towers, pyramids, and antennas. I will be experimenting with the method of wrapping copper tubing around wooden stakes and sticking them in the ground throughout my garden. As above, so below. I'll let you know how it goes and if I see a significant difference in the growth of my plants this year. Even though I'm finding it increasingly difficult to get through the final months of winter, I'm still finding ways to enjoy the moment. Not get too caught up in my spring garden planning, thinking about the days ahead, but rather focus on the now. As much as we want to rush through the winter days, it is a season that brings so much beauty. Feeling the cold air ignite every cell in my body brings a chilled sensation that shoots through my entire body and wakes me up more than any cup of coffee possibly could. It reminds me that I am here, living, breathing, and that no matter what is happening in the world or the freedoms that are stripped away from us, the earth, wind, and sun are always there to take us in. <laughs>